thanks very much everyone for for, for joining and, and to AJ Bell for, ha for having us today. Um, so we're just going to do a short presentation now and then we'll, we'll try and leave some time for, for questions at the end. So I'm Robert Guest. Uh, I'm a managing director at Foresight Group. Um, I've been with the business for, for eight years. Um, with Richard, I co-lead um, and have founded Foresight's uh, natural capital and forestry team, um, culminating in the launch of Foresight Sustainable Forestry Company, uh, which we launched in, in November 2021. Um, I've got a, a long-term investment in experience in sustainable real assets, um, and specifically, um, before I joined Foresight, I worked uh, for six years in greenfield project development, so taking assets through the development cycle on the renewables infrastructure side. A lot of that experience is, is relevant to our, our, our forestry development projects that we will tell you a little bit more about. I'm based in the Edinburgh office. Um, a lot of our assets uh, are in Scotland, um, and so it works well to be based up here. Um, and Richard, who I'll hand over to now, is uh, based in our London office. Hi there. Yes, so yeah, I'm Richard Kelly, um, and yeah, with Rob, I'm the uh, co-lead of Foresight Sustainable Forestry. Um, I joined Foresight uh, by coincidence about a week apart from Rob um, just over eight years ago. Um, at the latter four to five years with Rob, we've been co-founding um, the, the natural capital and forestry team within, within Foresight. Um, and the first half of my, uh, my time at Foresight was spent um, originating uh, new fund strategies. And I originated and, and launched four, four new strategies in the sustainable infrastructure space that have gone on to attract uh, about one and a half billion of um, of investment. Um, so uh, just a brief bit about um, Foresight and the, and the natural capital team. Foresight are um, sustainability led uh, sustainability led investment management house. Uh, we manage um, uh, dozens of of, of uh, infrastructure and sustainability funds um, with a combined AUM of over um, twelve and a half billion uh, billion pounds. Within forestry and natural capital, we have a dedicated um, investment team um, uh, of, of four specialists and supported by um, a broader investment team of, um, of 45 investment professionals. Um, we also have a large asset management uh, team um, with a total of 55 individuals in, in, in that function. Um, we also have a partnership with um, EJD Forestry uh, Limited, which are a specialist forestry um, advisory and, and consultancy firm uh, who have five um, uh, foresters with, with com a combined uh, experience of over 80 years. In terms of um, our forestry track record, um, we are the first and still only listed natural capital fund on the London Stock Exchange. Uh, we have deployed uh, over £250 million into uh, a combination of afforestation and uh, forestry assets. And we manage a portfolio of over um, 18,000 hectares of, uh, of land uh, that spans over 73 three properties. Um, we have planted over half a million trees in some of our um, most advanced deforestation schemes. And we have um, a further pipeline of uh, afforestation schemes that will see uh, over 9 million trees planted over the next two to three years. Um, and finally, we were also uh, we are also the first and uh, still only um, uh, investment company to have received the London Stock Exchange's new voluntary carbon market designation. Okay, so just uh, just a, a quick um, intro to the, the, the fund. Um, we we invest in we're, we're primarily a, a timber fund. Um, that provisioning service that's that's at the heart of what we do. And we do that by uh, buying forestry and afforestation assets. By afforestation, I mean taking uh, normally marginal farming land and converting that into, into new woodland and forests. We're focused on the UK. We can do 10% into the EEA, but to date, everything that we have is, is UK focused. We target a total return of CPI plus 5%, and we measure that over a five year average time frame. Um, we're looking at uh, providing access to asset-backed returns. So we, we mainly own freeholds of land and we're targeting capital appreciation. We're not a, a yield co. We're not looking to, to, to generate 
uh, dividend yield and cash dividend yield, we're looking to, to capture a total return from, from afforestation development, securing carbon credits, and then sale, selling uh, timber. In terms of our ESG um, and sustainability um, focus, we're, we're, we're very focused on that. And you can see there the green economy mark, uh, the VCM badge, uh, we're Article 9 of the SFDR, um, and we contribute to five UN SDGs. Um, and on all of our forests, we're looking to secure FSC and PEFC certifications. This work's been recognized in a couple of awards since launch. And so in the investment week, um, we were the most innovative uh, sustainable fund launch. Um, and in the National Sustainability Awards, we won um, some uh, recognition as the infrastructure finance um, initiative of the year in, from a sustainability uh, perspective. So um, we, we're, we're pushing hard on sustainability and ESG and a lot of our investor base uh, have come to us uh, with, with, with that in mind, as well as the sustainable financial return that we can deliver. So just uh, to give you a feel for uh, our asset allocation, um, up to 50% of our fund is afforestation. And you can see there on the, uh, the gold bar there, our plan is to um, develop those assets, um, secure planning permissions, secure grants, um, and uh, secure voluntary carbon units. We then plant the trees and establish them, which takes between three and five years and then look to exit after that point and recycle the capital back more into more development. Um, the other half of the fund uh, broadly is uh, established forestry assets um, and they have different ages of commercial timber standing within them and we rotate that portfolio to generate a cash yield. So we've worked out um, what's the maximum amount of development return and capital appreciation and voluntary carbon can we capture um, and the established forestry portfolio provides the cash flow to support that development business. And so that gives us a, a, a good risk adjusted and, and cash um, positive position. Just in terms of our, our split of where our assets are, um, about 80% of them are in Scotland. Um, and then we have a, a cluster of assets in, in South Wales uh, and, and currently two assets in England. So just hand over to Rich now to talk to you through how we procure land uh, and, and how we access uh, that afforestation opportunities. Yeah. So the um, the total addressable um, market in the UK is um, is significant. Um, so there is uh, currently uh, roughly twenty billion pounds worth of existing standing forestry um, uh, in the UK. Um, in addition, um, the government as a, a national target to um, add about a million hectares um, of, uh, of further woodland cover to the, to the UK. Um, and at current prices, that's uh, at least another £20 billion pounds of, of capital deployment opportunity. Um, and then on top of that, there would be roughly another £10 billion pounds of, of capex cost investment to develop those um, forestation sites. So in total, we're looking at roughly a, a 50 billion pound uh, addressable market um, in, in the UK. Um, in terms of the way that we um, originate our um, investment opportunities, um, for afforestation in particular, we focus on uh, a pr proprietary direct origination uh, approach. And so we have literally mapped um, all of Scotland, Wales and Northern England, and we've overlaid a whole series of map-based criteria and these are things like topology, soil maps, um, local woodland strategy, transportation routes, and so on. And we've identified a specific list of four and a half thousand properties um, that extend over um, uh, just under a million hectares that meet all of our afforestation criteria. Um, we've then purchased the title deeds from the land registry for every single one of those properties. And we run direct origination campaigns where, where the landowners are approached about a potential sale uh, to, the, to the forestry fund. Um, and that is the main source of, uh, of, of the deal flow um, and the afforestation assets which we have amassed uh, to date. Um, we've demonstrated in um, the most recent um, uh, financial report um, that we've been consistently able to acquire these properties at, um, at favorable prices. Um, 
And as I mentioned, this is a completely proprietary uh, technique um, that we're deploying and, and Foresight Sustainable Forestry has a full priority right over the deal flow um, that's associated with this, um, uh, with this uh, origination approach. <clears throat> Next slide, please, Rob. So if we just talk through um, uh, the, the engine room of, of returns for the fund um, are generated from the capital appreciation of developing um, afforestation uh, properties. Um, so um, it, we start at the beginning, we acquire land that we believe has excellent potential to become a, a new commercial forest. And in this case study, um, Bank Farm, this is the, the first um, asset that, um, uh, that we successfully planted last year. That property was acquired for just under one and a half million pounds uh, back in 2020. Um, by 2022, um, we have su successfully secured um, the planning permission, uh, a, a grant, um, and also registered the, the scheme with the Woodland Carbon Code for the creation of voluntary carbon credits, which I'll come on to talk about in a minute. Um, uh, and as a result, an independent valuer has assessed that this planted property, Bank Farm, um, is now worth nearly double what we, we originally acquire, acquired it for in, in a space of uh, roughly two years. So a, a very attractive um, IRR and a significant capital appreciation. Um, our strategy is to hold on to um, the, these planted afforestation properties for at least three years. Um, during that period, um, there is a, there will be a natural mortality rate of some of the planted trees, and so we replant and restock those trees, such that after three years, we have a fully stocked and um, established site. At that point, we enter an, an exit window, um, and we're looking to then exit um, the freehold um, of, of that young established forest. And as Rob said, we'd be looking to recycle the proceeds of that into a future wave of, of afforestation. And by 2050, we're looking to recycle the capital roughly five, five times. We hold on to the voluntary carbon credits um, uh, uh, for, the, for the longer term. Um, uh, and, I'll, and I'll come on to talk about why, why we do that. Um, next slide, please. So voluntary carbon credits, um, in essence, they, um, if you are a company and you have made a net zero pledge, um, so say you're going to be net zero by 2030, there are only two ways to achieve that. The first way is to decarbonize your activities by um, at least 90%. And then for the final uh, five to 10% of unabatable or unavoidable emissions, um, companies will then have to purchase and retire voluntary carbon credits. Um, and there has been a, uh, a exciting expansion in the number of net zero pledges. You can see in the chart on the left there, and there's been an exponential increase in these in these pledges, um, a more than doubling for um, several several years running now. And as a result of this expanding expanding number of pledges, there is a forecast um, demand is expected to rise significantly for voluntary carbon credits, and there is a forecast shortage of these credits. Um, and it's expected there will be an insufficient number of credits to meet demand as soon as 2027. As a result of this very tight supply of voluntary carbon credits. The price of carbon credits is, is widely forecast to increase dramatically by the end of the decade. And you can see on the chart there, there's a, a variety of forecasts, um, but generally the, the forecast range between a seven fold and a 31 fold increase in the price of voluntary carbon credits. And that's particularly exciting for Foresight Sustainable Forestry um, investors because the current portfolio is um, on track to create um, a million carbon credits. Um, uh, and recycle when that capital is recycled five times by 2050, and that expands to uh, to five million voluntary carbon credits, um, and, and it represents a significant and attractive upside opportunity for for investors. Okay, so um, just in terms of our performance, um, we've been fortunate to trade um, predominantly at a, a premium to our NAAV during some fairly turbulent and volatile um, equity market conditions. Um, you can see there, we've, we've put the FTSE All Share um, on there and also GILT um, to, to look at fixed income. Um, in the bottom left, uh, we've also shown the, the correlation of that analysis. Um, so we've been to date in our performance um, fairly stable and a fairly good rating, um, whilst there's been turbulent times. 
the asset classes in the UK is, is generally unleveraged, which is helpful uh, in, in current markets uh, and tends to be um, quite stable and has outperformed um, bonds, gilts and equities over long time frames. And that's being borne out today. But the main main call out here is that it's not it's the lack of correlation. So when you're looking at for your alternative exposure, forestry, UK forestry in particular, has that um, low or inverse correlation, um, which, which is helpful for for people's alternatives uh, and to consider for your alternative um, bucket. So just to wrap up, um, why? FSFC, why, why look at FS, FSF, which is our ticker? Um, we're looking to generate 5 million tonnes of additional carbon sequestration from our planting schemes over and above the carbon sequestration um, that, that is in our existing forest portfolio. So fighting climate change, um, that's a serious contribution towards the fight over, uh, against climate change over time, whilst also giving uh, access to that exciting upside exposure uh, of voluntary carbon potentially um, increasing very uh, over the next five to ten years. Um, we talked about our access to, to, to pipeline and, and how we're creating value by directly speaking to and farmers to procure that land and capture that, that development value and FSF has uh, the, the priority rights to Foresight's UK forestry pipeline. Um, it's an attractive asset class. Um, there's a, a huge undersupply of, of forestry globally. So by 2050, um, the World Bank are forecasting a 4.5 billion uh, cubic meters per annum shortage in forestry. The UK is 13% uh, forested with the European average above 40%. And we've got a serious supply issue of timber. In, in the UK, we import 80% of our timber every year. So that, that real terms, uh, inflation beating qualities of the asset class and its performance, lack of correlation to other um, equities and bonds, uh, we think makes, makes this, this something to, worth considering. Um, and beating inflation, you see um, clearly that commodity linkage and that lack of supply over a five plus year time frame, we think the tight supply globally, which is essential, uh, will mean that there's real returns to be had from, from UK forestry um, over time. Um, and we're talking about diversification. So thanks very much for your time. Um, happy to take some, some questions. A few questions about um, valuation of forests or estates that you, you look to acquire. And the first question is asking about um, timber prices. Is it the cost of timber that influences or mostly dictates the, the, the cost of when you buy an estate, or is it other factors? Um, what, what, what is the biggest driver for forest or, or estate valuation when you're looking to buy a new asset? So, so I think timber does have a large influence on how we and, and, and most other buyers of land, uh, we, when we're bidding for things, we use a, a DCF valuation approach and the timber yield is obviously important. There's also the land aspect uh, and our assumptions around um, capital um, appreciation of land values. But yes, the, the stack of timber in our uh, discounted cash flows is, is the the engine room, that's a significant driver of valuation. Obviously, with voluntary carbon as an income stream, um, that's quite volatile and we use it at a different discount rate. So we look at it on a forward-looking basis when we're bidding it. Um, but actually, in terms of how the NAV is set, that is run on a red book. So Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors red book valuation, and that's based on comparable transactions. So inherently, it's, it's mainly a backward looking and they need to see uh, tight groupings of, of data sets uh, of, of comparable transactions to, to, to prove concept. So our NAV, our NAV is completely independently set and mainly based on comparables, but we always cross check against the RDCF valuations and timber is a, a big part of what drives value in, in, in these assets. Next question is about um, diversity. Um, Two, two parts. Firstly, what's the failure rate of planting um, in a new uh, forested area? What would you allow for? 
Um, and then secondly, could you talk to the diversity or diversification of timber species and what, what you plant? So in, when we are establishing an afforestation site, um, uh, on, a, on a good site, we would be expecting typically about 10 to 15 percent annual mortality um, of the trees that are planted. And each year, um, the, you know, the site is reinspected, and any failed crops are what we call beat up um, and replaced with with replacement saplings. Um, such that, as I say, you do that process for three years running, and by the end of the three years, you would expect um, almost 100% of the trees to be to be sort of well established and on their and on their way. Um, in terms of the species mix, um, uh, we um, do focus on um, on planting a biodiverse mix of different species. Um, so, uh, for the commercial species which we harvest, um, it's a mix of um, Sitka spruce, Douglas fir, uh, Norway spruce, um, and, and other mixed mixed conifers. Um, and then for mixed broadleaves, um, it really is a, a real mix of, uh, of broadleaves from um, oak to birch. Um, and we also have a particular focus on planting um, um, particularly rare um, and endangered um, broadleaf speech, um, species such as home oak um, uh, and juniper, uh, for example. Um, and actually on the bank farm example that, um, that I talked through, um, that uh, the amount of juniper that we've planted on, on that site alone will increase the natu national population of juniper trees by, uh, by about 5%. Um, so um, uh, really exciting contribution, particularly when we bring the rest of the sort of 35 other afforestation sites in the portfolio online, the kind of impact that can have on critically rare and endangered trees. Question now um, about the, the, you mentioned the funds, has mostly been at a premium. Have you been issuing new shares over that time? And part of that, again, the, the kind of the size of the market, the addressable market, you said about 20 up to 50 billion in the UK, and your fund is reasonably modestly sized against that. What what ambition do you have for, for what what asset value would you like to get to um to, to have a meaningful amount of that? We stated in the um, prospectus that we had an ambition for the fund to be um, half a billion in scale within four to five years from from the IPO. Um, we uh, we raised 130 million pounds at the IPO. Um, we uh, deployed that quickly and well ahead of schedule um, uh, last year, and we were then off the back of that able to raise a further 45 million pounds of equity in in June last year. Um, so at the current time, we have a, a market capitalization of about 180 uh, million pounds. Um, and yeah, absolutely our ambition. Um, we have a, a strong pipeline of, um, of opportunities uh, coming in almost on a, on, a, on a daily basis. And we've got you know, significant ambitions to, to grow the fund uh, over time. And next question, um, quite a clever one here. Any chance of higher value added through um, adding additional infrastructure to your properties, mobile phone towers, for example, wind, uh, wind farms and so on? Yeah. So, uh... We, we do have uh, on some of our sites um, some, some hydro schemes, um, which are performing very well in the current um, um, energy markets. Um, and they've, they've got feed-in tariffs as well. Um, so that's helpful for, for, for cash flow. Um, we do have some letting properties and some holiday lets and some glamping pods. We've got some quite ambitious um, Sort of natural capital projects. Uh, so we have a Highland estate, which has got a very diversified um, income stream base in it, and we're we're doing some really exciting um, natural capital and biodiversity focused projects. Um, there's a big opportunity for wind farm development and co-locating wind turbines, and that's you know we do have um, mobile phone masts, but the income stream there is is, is pretty de minimis. But there are about seven live conversations going on with potential interested uh, wind farm developers on the site and the exciting thing for us there is that the turbines are now you know six megawatt turbines are, are huge and they don't really they're so big now that the, the tree interference of the wind yield is very low so you can keyhole them into the forest and so that's pure upside exposure for us if we can keep 90% plus of, of our trees standing, keyhole those turbines in and then have some nice lease income coming in. Um, that could be really good upside. There's a lot of lot of benefit there um, from
battery storage could be, but I think wind farms is the one that's probably the, the big upswing if, if two or three to come off. The planning system in the UK and in Scotland has been quite slow for onshore wind and obviously grid connections are challenging, but um, that, that upside potential is there and uh, we do work on it um, using our experience as, as foresight. There's a lot of wind people within the team, which is, which is helpful when those opportunities come up. Final question from me, uh, it's one, one from me again. Um, on the um, example you showed from Bank Farm, um, you, you, know, you said you looked to sell the freehold after kind of three to five years. Who, who, who would you look to be selling your freeholds to? Who would be the acquirer in, in these transactions? Yeah, so I think there's, I think there's probably two um, potential target markets that we'd be focused on. Um, the first is um, I guess high net worth individuals. Um, so forestry um, qualifies for business property relief um, in the UK. So if you own it as an individual um, and you uh, own it at death and you leave that asset to your children, it can pass um, uh, inheritance tax free. Um, so there's a, there's a significant market of um, high net worths who buy um, individual forest or collections of forest for inheritance tax um, reasons. So they would be one um, potential buyer group. Uh, either on an individual basis or there are pooled funds, private funds of um, uh, investing for that purpose. Um, the other key target market would be institutional um, uh, investors and natural capital um, has, has, is very much on the up in terms of an investment trend at the moment. And there are um, any number of large institutional investors of, uh, into standing forestry assets, and they're investing for you know the natural capital benefits and services that that forestry can provide. Um, uh, yeah, so we you know we believe there's a, there's a buoyant market. Uh, on average, um, in a typical year, there is um, the sort of 300 million plus of uh, forestry transactions. Um, that, that occur on market and, and what can be gleaned by, by off market. So we think there's a, there's a buoyant market between private and institutional buyers for the, for the exit of those forestation sites. And so just to add to that, I think, um, uh, some, some buyer market, a lot of sawmillers and panel board manufacturers, many of them also have invested in their supply chain. And so quite often they will, will buy um, forestry assets and build up portfolios obviously our forests will be slightly at the younger end uh, for, for some of those guys but they do tend to to be attracted by that and and they can be some quite big players uh, if they see something nice in the region that they're already managing a forestry portfolio they can bolt that in and that secures the supply for maybe a new line they might be planning to open up so they're, they're probably the third third player in the market that's really interesting, Robert, Richard. Both, thank you very much indeed for the presentation and introducing us to to the, to the fund. It's been yeah, very interesting indeed. Thank you. Thanks, thank you very much.